fashion. Today I want to talk to you about the Met Ball. I'm here at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in Fifth Avenue in New York City. The Costume Institute is inside and this is where the red carpet is normally. So the Met Ball is usually the first Monday in May. And this year it hasn't happened yet, but may happen in September. And I wanted to revisit some past Met Balls just to talk about fun fashion. It's celebrities, it's models, it's fashion designers, and it's all about the clothes. My first experience with the Met Ball was when I had to work there. When I worked at Vogue, all of us worked at the Met Ball. We would greet guests and make sure everybody was taken care of. The best part about the Met Ball is that it truly is about the fashion and people are really encouraged to go for it. Designers, live for it. It's super fun. This isn't about promoting a movie. It's not about playing a character. It's really about the clothes. The themes usually give us a guidebook, a sort of jumping off place. And sometimes we really go with the theme and sometimes we just forget about it and make a nice dress. Some of my favorite Met Ball moments are the obvious ones. I loved when Rihanna wore that incredible greenish yellow giant long gown. That gown took two years to make, and that was when the theme was China. I thought it was hilarious watching Lady Gaga do her whole camp routine, but some of my Met Ball favorites are maybe a little less well-known. I'm absolutely always a fan of what Karen Elson wears. She is an absolutely gorgeous model, but she really is able to like get into character every year. I think that her looks have been some of the best. My favorite Karen Elson dress was the Charles James year. She really went for it. It's old Hollywood glamour. And that's something I'm often allergic to. I think that referencing that can look untouchable and too camp, but in this context, it was perfect. The socialites don't get nearly enough coverage, in my opinion. I think that Lauren Santo Domingo and Tabitha Simmons look extraordinary year after year, and I admire their courage. This Oscar de la Renta dress was outrageous. I couldn't believe it when I first saw it. I think that it's like Laura Ashley on crack. It's bows and puffs. It's like Princess Diana's wedding dress. It's completely wild, and I love it. Tabitha Simmons is a designer and stylist and socialite who just embraces the Met theme. This one is one of my favorites. She just looks like springtime in a gown. It's so much, but it's also so light and so pretty. One thing that's amazing about the Met Ball is that there are no pictures inside. All you see is the red carpet. Social media isn't allowed. The event isn't televised. So there's this incredible performance that goes on inside and no one sees it except the guests. It's a hard ticket to get, and it's an amazing ticket to get, a private concert from Beyonce or Madonna. One thing that was invented at the Met Ball that I love, but also hate, is the naked dress. Cher wore a Bob Mackie naked dress in 1973. And we've seen lots more at the Met Ball. Beyonce went naked one year. Bella Hadid went naked one year. I think one reason that the naked dresses happen at the Met is because there aren't any cameras inside. So the footage of the dresses is really controlled. I still don't know where I stand on the naked dress. I don't know that it's a dress if you're completely naked with just your private bits covered by sparkles. It takes a lot of courage to wear a naked dress. I'm really impressed by the boldness of these women. One of the best things about the Met Ball is it's like the home of the greatest fashion faux pas known to humankind. Dresses with gloves attached, dresses that are wildly unflattering, dresses that are weird, that are costumes. It's really fun. You know, it's like a couture costume party. All the really good times at the Met Ball seem to happen in the bathroom and at the after parties. And those are the places where you actually get to see pictures too. The Costume Institute was actually started by costume designers on Broadway, but it's one of the most important resources for designers who are working today. When designers come to the US to visit or come to New York for sales, they often make an appointment to go through the Costume Institute. The collection is incredible. It's a massive source of inspiration. Zach Posen actually worked there as an intern, and I think that's part of what inspired him to become who Zach Posen is now. 
And the whole reason that this actually happens is to raise money for the Costume Institute. It's not just a party or a premiere. Follow the Costume Institute on Instagram. It's so inspiring. So this dress is by Alessandra McKelly for Gucci and Dakota Johnson wore it to the Met Gala in 2019. The theme that year was camp. And we were talking about like just wild icons. What could be the inspiration? And we were looking at the Gucci show and thinking about Gucci's sort of brand DNA. And we started thinking about bleeding heart Madonnas, an idea of being this sort of like camp Virgin Mary. <laughs> So that's where this dress came from. And the bleeding heart is very much part of the Gucci vernacular. Dakota is the face of the Gucci fragrance. So we wanted her to really sort of embody that. And I love the color. And I love the fact that it's fully covered, but the whole dress is entirely transparent. Part of the magic of this was this sort of Stevie Nicks vibe, this sort of idea of like, lightness, etherealness, but also this like completely camp Virgin Mary. Dakota wore a crown that was sort of referencing the corona on Virgin Mary dresses, but also a crown of thorns, more Catholic iconography. And I think that Alessandro Michele's sensibility is really well suited to the Met. The dresses tend to be over the top, there's a lot of camp references. There is this little bit of like Marlene Dietrich drama. There's the gathered shoulder with the beading coming down the sleeve with this tissue edge sleeve. And part of that is this sort of draggy silver screen siren silhouette. So in 2017, Selena Gomez was going to the Met Ball with Coach. Her collaboration with Coach was starting and we wanted to make sure it was the best dress. So we made two. This is the dress that she didn't end up wearing. So I wanted to show you the difference and how the process works. It was funny because somebody said somebody's basically wearing a flower outfit. So I can't wait to actually see this. So my favorite part is as soon as I'm done speaking with you, I'm gonna go enjoy it. It's so good to, it's so good to see you too. This dress was inspired by vintage lingerie. It's something that Stuart was showing in his collection for Coach at the time. And we always love a slip dress on Selena. So the idea was to take a vintage slip and make it very naked, very sexy, and add this bow because it felt like Comme des Garçons. The back of the dress is quite beautiful. You can see this vintage lingerie reference here in the tea-stained lace, the little petticoat detail and the gather at the top of the butt. This fabric was actually a fabric that Coach was using at the time. So the dress is actually a Coach material, which is a polyester. And that was an interesting reference towards Comme des Garçons for us because Comme uses synthetic materials all the time. So we thought it would be appropriate. One of my favorite dresses that I've ever had the opportunity to work on was also for the Camp Met Ball. Nina Dobrov was going with Zach Posen and GE came in to help us 3D print an entirely plastic dress. I don't have it here because we can't even put it on a mannequin. It's entirely made of plastic. It's two pieces and you put the front piece on and then the back piece on and there are little holes in the side that then are laced up. When it was time to take it off, she had to cut it off. She wasn't able to ride in a regular car because she couldn't sit down in it. So she had a disco pole car service to the Met Gala. And what I loved about it was that it was sort of an imaginary princess dress. She wore a tiny little Lurex slip underneath because the dress was clear. So we had to do something about what went underneath. And the reason it was Lurex was to sort of add some sparkle and shine. But my favorite part of the dress is this like swoop that comes off the back. It's almost like a ribbon in the wind or a piece of chiffon that's been caught in the breeze. Nina is so classically pretty. She already looks almost like a cartoon of a princess and we really wanted to enhance that and give her this sort of perfect skin and a bright graphic lip, a stiff hairdo and like an imagination of a princess's dress. It was very much conceptual. My favorite part about the Met Ball is probably the creative process leading up to Met Ball. So, I mean, every year has been depending on the designer and, and how involved they've let me and you and all of us be. You couldn't really sit down, right? 
I couldn't sit down, period. <laughs> and I stood for the entire evening and threw up throughout the whole you, you didn't sit through dinner? <laughs> no. Everyone in the world only sees the finished product and the whatever and the beauty and the, the red carpet photos. But it's the real stories and the making of and how everything has to be. And if only people knew what it takes to get to the carpet. Thanks so much for joining me. I love talking about the Met Ball and the Costume Institute. I hope you liked it too. Don't forget to subscribe, like, follow, ring the bell. Leave any questions or comments down below. See you next week.